Okay, so today we're going to continue on part 3 um, based on BLAST, but um, in this section I want to focus on some of the terms I've been mentioning and I've been talking about things like homology. So, in basically, um, in bioinformatics has to do with sequence analysis. So we're going to define some of the terms that we used in um, homology and what they mean and also um, deal with some examples. So what is sequence analysis? Um, sequence analysis basically um, um, in biology um, is when we take a DNA or protein sequence um, and then we align them, okay, or we do sequence databases searches um, or other bioinformatics methods um, using a computer. So basically is that um, an alignment is a mutual arrangement of two sequences. What that means is that you take one sequence and then you try to match it up or align it with another sequence. This usually is done by computer or a software. You're not really doing it with your own hands. Um, and then what happens is that you, you identify whether two sequences are similar and where they differ. Um, the sequences that are similar will probably have the same function. Okay, you can infer the same function. It's not always the case, but it can tell you, but possibly if you see some repeated uh, uh, patterns in the sequences, that perhaps it, it could play an important role in the function uh, in, in, of those proteins or even um, yes, proteins. So basically, sequence alignment involves the identification of the correct location of the deletions and insertions that have occurred in either any of the two sequences that you're trying to align um, since the divergence from a common ancestor. So then I've also thrown this term before, pairwise sequence alignment, what is it? I think I've also sort of basically handed already and as the word indicates pairwise, so it just has to be to do with just pairing two sequences. If it's more than two, it's usually referred to as multiple sequence alignment. So pairwise um, sequence alignment um, allows us to um, to answer questions whether about a gene or protein whether they are related to one another okay so the relatedness of two proteins at sequence level may suggest that they are homologous okay relatedness also suggests that they may have a common function so by analyzing many DNA and protein sequences, it is possible to identify um, structures that we call domains or motifs, okay? So domains has to do basically mostly, um, um, these are conserved regions of the proteins that uh, oftentimes you know, have to do with the function of proteins, where motifs, it's more of a structural um, part of the protein. It could sometimes play a role in the function of the protein, um, but they do not work independently compared to the domain, okay? Um, and usually they are shared among groups of molecules or groups of proteins, okay? The analysis of the relatedness of proteins and genes are accomplished by aligning sequences, okay? So the sequence alignment that we've been talking about. Let's look at some definitions of homology, similarity, and identity. We're going to define this using some examples. Um, and one of them is that we're going to consider the 
lipo calin family of proteins okay which um, include the rbb4 proteins which are actually just retinal binding proteins and it's a uh, family of um, proteins that have to do with transportation of um, usually mole small molecules such as lipids, uh, bile, steroids, and so on in, in species, okay? So say we, we align the human RBB4 with this accession number and the bovine B lactoglobulin protein with a specific um, alignment, okay? And we can see what kind of alignment we will uh, get, okay? Um, one thing is that these two proteins are distantly but significant, significantly related. What do we mean by that distantly? Um, so what that means in terms of speciation or how they arose, okay? They share a common ancestor but then so the bovine one, for example, may have arose earlier in the evolutionary timeline where human beings may be arose later, okay? But they have this um, uh, related to the sequences, the two sequences, the human RBB4 and the B lactoglobulin, which is also an RBB4 protein, for example, um, have shared some significant similarity in the sequences. So both of these um, accession numbers you can obtain in from entrance, okay? I think by now you should know how to, to at least get those um, accession numbers, okay? Two sequences are usually homologous if they share common evolutionary ancestry. So if they have a common ancestor, that's when we refer them to be homologous. Um, for proteins, um, if they if they are homologous, um, they would share um, a significantly related three-dimensional structure, okay? And this is really why oftentimes they may have similar functions. It's not always the case. Um, and the example is here that, again, the human RBB4 and the B lactoglobulin from the bovine have very similar structures as determined by X-ray crystallography. And indeed, they are like that in most species. And so this is just a picture showing the different kinds of um, RBB proteins and, and, and the um, B lactoglobulin proteins, okay? So you can see that the structures, the three-dimensional structures are almost similar, okay? Now one is slightly different, but it's sort of actually two components coming together that look like that. But somehow they look more or less the same, although they are from different species, okay? When two sequences are homologous, they are amino acid or they are nucleotides, okay, that are present in the sequences, may share significant identity. So while homology is an inference, okay, so we say sequences are homologous or not, Identity and similarity are quantities that can be measured or quantified, okay? And what they do is that they describe the relatedness of sequences, okay? So again, identity and similarity are quantitative measurement of the number of residues which are either identical in both of the sequences being aligned or somehow share some sort of chemical, physiological, um, similarities okay they can be expressed as percentages whereas homology is that you are either homologous or not okay so diving deeper into the differences between sequence identity sequence similarity and sequence homology so sequence identity 
is when you're aligning two sequences against one another okay is that um, you if you find that the nucleotides are exactly the same so say you find a G in one position and exactly in that position in the other position in the other sequence you also find a G so the exact same nucleotide is present in the two sequences being aligned at the exact positions okay that is what we referring to sequence identity whereas with sequence similarity is that you would find for example um, what is it nucleotides or amino acids that may have similar chemical properties but they are not exactly the same so for example maybe serine and um, say methionine for example they are different but maybe they are perhaps both basic in nature so they will share similar physiochemical properties okay so that is referred to similarity okay um, sequence homology again is just a general term that indicates evolutionary relatedness among sequences so sequences are either homologous if they are derived from a common ancestral sequence. Um, one thing I want to emphasize is that two molecules or sequences may be homologous without sharing statistically significant amino acid or nucleate identity. So you could be pairing two sequences, but you don't get a lot of sequences that are identical. However, they can still be homologous, okay? For example, in the lipopalene family, all the members are homologous, regardless of the species they are from. But some have sequences that have diverged so greatly that they share no recognizable sequence identity. But however, in these sequences, most of the time they have retained their three-dimensional structures, okay? That then helps them to maintain the same function sometimes, okay? Um, so in general, three-dimensional structures diverge much more slowly than amino acid sequence identity between two proteins. And you might want to think of a reason why that is, you know. So ponder about that a little bit. So let's talk about orthologous and paralogous sequences. We'll start off with orthologous. So proteins that are homologous may be either orthologous or paralogous. Orthologous, um, or the word ortho means exact, are homologous sequences or genes in different species that have evolved from the same common ancestral gene during speciation, okay? So here is an example of um, RBB proteins, okay? So actually this is a tree showing different RBB proteins in different species so you can see you have like the common carp the zebra bees rainbow trout there chicken is right there mouse red is there cow pig horse human and frog okay so if if you take the accession numbers and you went and did a multiple sequence alignment and you do a, what we call a phylogenetic tree which we will learn later on how to do that um, this is what you probably get and um, this is a bit older so you know as things are being updated and new species are being identified this might look different from what it used to look like okay but anyways the take-home message here is that um, for species that are much closer to one another okay um, um, what did I want to say? Uh, so this, um, the sequences that are more closely related to each other uh, will end up being grouped much closer to one another than others. So for example, human 
um, sequence probably um, is less um, similar or related to the common cup, although they still share the common, the same common ancestor. Okay, but say human and the horse um, may be well closely related to one another, for example. Okay. Okay, so this is just um, what I've been talking about. That it was an unrooted tree, so it doesn't have a root. We will explain what unrooted and rooted trees are later on in um, um, the next lectures. Okay, um, this was taken from the thirteen lipophylin, and then you know the important thing to notice is that sequences that are more closely related to each other are grouped closer to each other. Okay. So orthologous are presumed to have similar biological functions. So for example, the human and red algae do both, both transport vitamin A in serum, um, whereas often paralogous genes um, often develop different functions because what happens is that there is a missing selective pressure on one of the copy of the duplicated gene. Okay, so Paralogous genes, remember, well, I didn't say this, but paralogous genes basically are genes within the same organism, so a duplication of the same gene or protein in the same organism. And then, you know, because they are two, it's easy for natural selection to miss or, or it's, a, it's pressure, it's selective pressure on one of them. So one escapes the, 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 the pressure and then maybe therefore they may develop different functions. Okay, so paralox or paralogus, para means in parallel. Okay, so uh, they are homologous sequences with this, the same organism or genome that arose by a mechanism such as gene duplication. So, for example, the human plasma RBD is homologous to another carrier protein or human um, apple, the uh, human apple lipoprotein, okay, with these accession numbers. These two proteins are paralox. Um, all of the lipocalins have distinct distributions in the body and are thought to have distinct but related functions as carrier protein. So what that means is that um, um, so say maybe one might be carrying vitamins, the other one might be carrying um, I mean one might be carrying vitamin A and maybe another one would carry vitamin D. So they're still probably doing the same functions of transportation, okay, but maybe they're carrying different types of similar molecules, for example. Um, so the human alpha globin and the beta globin are paralox, as, and also the mouse alpha globin and mouse beta globins are paralox. Okay? So a human alpha globin and mouse alpha globin are orthologs because why? They are found in two different species, isn't it? Okay, they're orthologs. If they are in the same species, we say they are paralox. But now the question is, what is the relation of the human alpha globin to the mouse beta globin? Can you think of a reason? How, do, how would you classify them? Something to ponder about. Okay, so here's another tree, again, but this is now just based on um, aligning um, paralogous human lipocalin. So it's all from one species. In this case, it's the human, okay, lipocalins, okay. Um, and then, you know, so you're seeing that they have, um, again, differences in their structure because you see how they are rooting out um, differently. Some, of course, are more probably closely related, not I want to say closely related, but similar or more identical, okay, than others, for example. Same thing. Um, I've mentioned
mentioned that already. Okay, in all genome sequencing projects, um, um, author logs are identified by searching databases. Okay, so two DNA or protein sequences are defined as homologous based on achieving a significant alignment scores. We've already spoken about scores, so we can refer back to that. However, homologous proteins do not necessarily share the same function. It's always um, quite important to remember that just because you've seen um, something that has a significant score or alignment that you can't necessarily just conclude, oh, they must have the same function. Okay, it's not always the case. They may have different functions even though their sequences may has some significant um, alignment. So let's recap quickly. So homology designates a qualitative relationship of a common descent between sequences, okay? Two genes are either homolo homologous or not, okay? So you, it doesn't make sense to say two genes are 43% homologous, so there's no percentage to it. There's no quantitative measure to it. Either you are related or you are not. Okay? So it doesn't make sense to say John is 43% diabetic. You are diabetic or you are not. Okay? So the same thing is um, um, similar when we're talking about homology. Two genes are orthologs if they have originated from the same single ancestral gene in the most recent common ancestor in their respective genomes, okay? Um, two genes are paralogs if they are related by duplication. So orthologs, different species or organisms, paralogs, same organism, usually via gene duplication. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you.